Hello everyone, and welcome back to another series in the TNT Championships. This is going to be the first game of the semifinals bracket, Code S playoffs. This is going to be R22 versus Melvin Fro, best of seven series. Here we go, game one. Now, some have been saying R22 over here spawning in the left, and Melvin Fro in the blue spawning on the right. Some have been saying that Melvin Fro might be the best player to ever touch this game. We'll see. Bringing his new patented Badger Owl. This is his tier 2 comp. Sorry, this is his tier 3 comp that he thinks is unbeatable, that's going to, to ruin the game. So we'll see how he brings it out here against R22. R22, on the other hand, playing Hopper, bringing more of a bit of an off meta, kind of closer to meta though, deck. Seeing triple tier 2 Squizzard, which is quite uncommon right now. Before I get too far here, 5 farm single here from Melvin. Might be seeing some early aggression. Probably just hadn't scouted his opponent. Looks like he just did that. Sells his uh, Warren down. Goes up to 7 farms. R22 going to respond with the Warren as well. Just some early game stuff here. But looking back at R22's deck. Bringing that Squizzard. Bringing a triple tier 2. Cam Falcon. Adding a Snake as a bit of a flex pick on top. And then the Boar Kicker. Boar Kicker. Really, really good for some nice kind of mid-game timings. Uh, can really punish this Badger Owl before it has a chance to get out. And I think that's what R22 should be aiming for in this matchup here. Try to get maybe one and a half to two bases up, and then try to make that boar timing work before Melvin has enough to make his full tier three composition become the death squad that it so seems to be. Gonna be seeing the expansion here from R22. Has a really nice base layout. Should be able to get this campfire as well. Bringing him up to a really, really, really nice position here in the early game. Melvin looks like he's going to expand as well. Try to copy R22 at the moment. No one looking for tech quite yet. And looks like we're just going to be seeing a bit of a farming from each player. Melvin going to move into some uh, some skunks here. Whereas R22 is going to grab two farms. So against the tech from Melvin, R22 may have to be a little bit careful here on his greed. Yep, going to sell down one farm. Grab some cams of his own. Gonna rebuy that second farm. See Melvin get three farms on his second mill. Actually has no tier one at the moment. Supply blocking his squirrels. Super, super greedy here from Melvin. Is it gonna pay off or is it gonna get punished by R22? No argument. R22 also going to greed heavily. So we're gonna be seeing this game just kind of move into a mid game now. Uh, if this game does go ultra, ultra, ultra late, I think it's gonna have to be the advantage to R22. Uh, Maybe the weaker deck toward the ultra late game, but in terms of map layout, you're seeing so many more mills on R22's side. Has a pretty easy four right here. This mill is going to be really hard to take uh, for anyone, but Melvin will really just be stuck on these three bases with a campfire at the back. Now we're going to see R22 going to take out this fire and moving some cams out across the map. Both players up to 16 farms now. What is the choice now? Are we going to see an explosion into tier 3 tech, or are we going to see try to make a tier 1, tier 2 timing out of this? R22 looking for some cheeky cam harass. Does Melvin know about it? I don't think he does. Oh no, 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 no! Oh no! Going to save the cam just barely. If Melvin was on top of that, maybe he could have got that, but cam is going to get out alive. And we see Melvin, here we go. Melvin dropping that badger. At the very same time, R22 throwing down a boar of his own, maybe a little bit ahead, but not for very, very much here. And it looks like Melvin might be going for some more tech as well. Has a ton of food floating. I want to see what Melvin goes for. Yep, that's going to be the owl on top of that. Might even be seeing a second owl here. Boy, very, very greedy. This is what I mean by there's a timing here that might be able to be punished. This is such a greedy play by Melvin. R22 may have a window if he wants to take it but also i think he's just going to build up toward his own timing here paying for that boar right now so 40 seconds at 4 48 i believe will be his boar coming out this badger is now paid for as well you can see it's only a little bit behind the boar will be out with plenty of time these owls are quite far behind the tech of the boar though if r22 decides to move out with the boar push he will be way ahead of these owls. They really will not have a chance to get out. And if Melvin decides to pay for these owls, it will be way behind in terms of money uh, when this fight comes out. He'll have two owls here paid for, but not on the battlefield. If R22 decides to move out with this push, 
Melvin adding some pigeons to help support that badger. So it's really going to come down to how much damage can R22 do here with this board push. If he can take out the second mill, which he has a really good line of attack towards, and uh, then and hold the counterattack from Melvin's owls, uh, this could be game over. We'll see the badger and the boar is here. So many falcons here from R22. It's going to be four against only one or two from Melvin here. A couple more even resupplying now. R22 needs to move though, the first owl is about to hit the field, he only has a little bit of time just to waste. No, the owls are now here, the timing might be just gone on a razor's edge, this is getting tighter and tighter here for R22. As every moment passes, going to go around and head home. Gonna buy some farms, so now the prerogative is on Melvin Fro to try to make the attack happen. As R22 has chosen to expand instead, grab some snakes as well. But I don't know, Melvin with these owls is going to be such an oppressive composition. Owl is going to be able to either harass or just have a straight up aggressive fighting composition. Trying to bait the mice out, he is able to do so, but the mice starting this fight so effectively, the badger have so many tanks already revved up. Bad, the boar already goes down, the badger super low health, but I don't think it's going to get finished off here. Everything gone for R22, every tier 3 still alive for Melvin Fro, and that has to be the tap out. GG game one going to go to Melvin Fro. All right, here we go. Game number two, R22 versus Melvin Fro. Spawning in the very tippy top, R22 playing red, and in the very very south of the map, Melvin Fro in the blue, playing the same deck as before. Really liked how that turned out for him. He really was able to get his perfect composition out, and when he had that composition out. He was just able to kind of decimate with it. It was a total slaughter in that endgame fight against the boar. Uh, and I want to see how R22 can try to switch things up here. Going to bring the same deck as last time, but getting a much worse map for it. To be fair, neither player has a particularly good map. But uh, R22 has no chance of getting a second mill on this map. It's just, there's no way. Maybe you could get these two if you really wanted to, but I don't think we'll be seeing that. I reckon we'll probably be seeing a one base boar here from R22. Or some kind of tier 2 timing push. Melvin Fro, on the other hand, does have this campfire he could go for. Is also kind of out in front. Could go for this back expand. Uh, also kind of in dangerous area, though, especially with lizards in the game. Both players are going to have to be wary about taking any sort of expansion here. Also, we are seeing this sort of donut shape of the map. You see the middle of the map is a hole. I mean, it's not really useful. There's nothing here. The outsides are kind of taken, and so there's this hole in the middle. And what are donut maps really, really, really good for? Well, that's lizards. Lizards are going to be able to hit from so many different angles here. If R22 wants to get aggressive off on that map, he will be able to. And we're going to see the tech here from R22 grabbing the cams early. On the other hand, Melvin Fro going to go pure tier 1 here, only just grabbing squirrels of his own. I, I imagine Mel Melvin Fro might sell here and grab some tier 2. This looks like he's going to get some skunks, alright. And rebuy those tier 1. Going to see this game start to move into a bit of a mid game again. I don't think R22 is. I want to see what kind of composition R22 decides to go for. Uh, likely off this one base timing, might add some falcons or snakes in, or maybe go for more cams and then might try to move into a boar. I think Melvin Fro is very aware of this, getting deep scouts over and over again. Here we go, Melvin. Just going to go more tier 1. He has so much food floating. Going to grab a badger or an owl, looks like. There goes the badger, Warren. And R22 going to grab falcons, but needs to get a scout on this badger. Needs to get some aggression going, or needs to get a boar of his own. Does he see it? I don't think he saw it. Oh, he did see it. Okay, good for R22. Early scout on that badger. What is the response going to be? Snakes. Okay. So looking for a bit of a punish or a counter to this badger. Snakes, historically good counter to badger are going to do a pretty good job tagging that thing down. They do a ton of damage over a long period of time. However, Melvin does have those pigeons, which are really, really, really just basically a hard counter to the snakes. Uh, but enough snake tags can kill it. So we'll see how that turns out. I think those snake tags are going to be super important when this fight does come out. Melvin perfectly timing that. Going to pay for that badger right on time. Badger should be out at around 353. And R22 going for an expansion here. 
I think this is really not the right play. Even if Melvin has seen it or not, it doesn't super matter. Just because he doesn't... He wants to have as much money into his... Uh, to holding this push as possible. Melvin's going to have a brutal Badger timing here off this one base. And R22 needs to be prepared to hold it. And you need all the money you can get to do that. And it looks like Melvin's going to see it as well. Good scouting here from Melvin. Of course, no farms on that. R22 waiting for... When is that Badger going to pop out? Oh my god, fucking fly landing on me. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Melvin going to grab a farm of his own. Uh, base, that is. And here we go. The push seems to be moving out. R22 bringing these forward cams back a little bit. What is the choice here from Melvin? Is he going to try to form up on this new base? Or is he going to try to make this push happen? This is so risky for R22. Trying to go for this base snipe. But the army is here. If he loses these cams, this is going to be almost just guaranteed game over. He's going to get the reveal. This is horrible. No! One cam goes down. Can he save the second one? He needs to save this cam. He needs to save this cam. He does get out of the way just in time. Melvin trying so hard, but the army not together. No, he's going to get the cam! I think, oh, he moves just in time, so one cam does survive, but losing one cam for free is not how you want to start this fight. Throwing a tier 2 down, I don't think you have tier time right now, R22, to put this tier 2 down. It's not going to be on the battlefield in time for this attack. Throwing some squirrels down at the last minute. What is the push here from Melvin? Just going to go home, really. Wow, does not feel like he has enough, I guess. So many falcons here from R22. Melvin going to grab an owl, two owls. So looking to get up that oppressive late game comp, two owls and a single badger. What is R22 going to do? You look at the army value, R22 slight, starting to pull ahead now. You see Melvin's craft has stagnated at the moment. Of course that badger is still so, so oppressive, has the potential to do so much damage. But now when these owls are coming, I think R22 needs to make something happen. Has a couple lizards running around, but this is not really enough to do anything real damage here. Has a second mill here with one farm going down. Melvin has his campfire. So both players tied on farms and that is going to be the first owl paid for, the second heavily supply locked. I'm not even sure that second owl will get paid for unless he sells something down. Especially if this fight starts. Is it going to be paid for? It's so slow going. Two food at a time. A single squirrel getting killed here and being paid for will stop that from being paid for. But yes, the owl is paid for. Here comes the fight. The snake's trying to get tags onto that badger. A couple tags, but not that many. Unfortunately. Oh my god. It's brutal. Keeping some falcons alive. And that, that's, that is a dead badger right there. And that has to be the tap out here from Melvin. Starving. That badger is going to die of poison. Tries to sell it, but unfortunately... So the Badger is rebuilding. Owl is building, almost built, but has no Tier 1. R22 should just see this, walk in, and be able to clean this game up. Needs to move out now. I mean, this this Owl may come out in time, but it's it's a, it's a Tier 3 that's not going to be able to do enough on its own. Couple Lizards here. Is he going to go for the mill? I think he just needs to go... For some tier 1 warrants here, that's exactly what he's going to do. Try to kill these mice before they get any time out of your real value. But this badger is getting closer and closer. Melvin Fro just wasting time at this point. Gonna go for the badger warren though. It should go down before it gets out. And that is going to be R22 taking game number 2 here. Wow, incredible play here. Alright, tie it up 1-1. One to one. Game number 3. R22 versus Melvin Fro. Bringing us in the top... Sorry, in the bottom left here is R22, playing Hopper again. And Melvin Fro in his Royal Navy Blue in the top right. Bring both players bringing the same decks. I think Melvin Fro maybe had a chance, at, or, or a better timing where he could have made something happen. He had that single base Badger, and then tried to turn it into a triple tier 3 off a single base. And I don't think he quite had the... Uh, I don't think one base is quite enough to sustain that amount of tier 3, tier 2, and tier 1. It just, he was really farming out by the end there. It was ended up being forced to sell one of his owls down. Uh, try to get out that late game composition he so desperately wanted, but just didn't quite have the map for it. Uh, we'll be having a much better map this time. Of course, the second base is by no means good. It's got this weird low ground 
where R22's expansion has a really nice uh, peek down onto it, I suppose you could say. Uh, you might see both players getting an expansion, but you won't see both of these mills getting taken. It's just, they're too close proximity. Uh, if R22 gets this base, I think Melvin will play single base. If Melvin plays this base, I think R22 will pressure that base. This high ground is just too much to ignore for R22's side here. It's going to put so much pressure on this base, I imagine we might see Melvin going for another one base badger here. Of course, could try to go, try to go for a base up here. These are somewhat protected. As long as Melvin is active in this portion of the map, should be able to keep an eye on these two mills. Uh, so might, we might see Melvin take those instead. Just going to be a little bit of tier 1 chicken at the moment. Both players a little bit afraid of anything. I will say, I do, I do think Melvin has a chance to get these two bases. R22 definitely with the advantage here in terms of these tight 3 mills here. We are going to see R22 tech up a little bit, grabbing his cams. Melvin Fro staying on 2-1 for now, but I don't think we'll see him stay on it for long. He does know about the tier 2. What's the response going to be? Perhaps a tier 1 push here? No. Going to sell down tier 1. Going to grab some skunks. This has been the timing we've seen all games now. However, at this point, Melvin Fro was quite far behind in this double tier 2 actually. This is super greedy. R22 with the cam almost produced. The second one on the way. R22 might have a window here to just attack and win. Especially with the lizards. Second well, second cam getting produced, going to grab some snakes of his own, so we're gonna see we are gonna see that push probably delayed a little bit. First skunk going to hit the board for Melvin in about ten seconds. And then those Falcons going to join him very soon. Melvin has such a nice high ground up here to hide a tier three warrant potentially. R22 is aware of it, is scouting it. And here we go, Melvin grabbing this upwards mill. As I was saying earlier, if as long as he stays somewhat active in this middle portion of the map, he should be able to keep this mill protected. Of course, against lizards and cams, you have to be always careful. Now going to rally out his army. He's aware that these cams are somewhere here. Doesn't know exactly where, but it's going to be difficult for him to keep this mill against the lizards and against tier one like this. Gonna rally out, but yep, here are the cams on this mill. Now it's gonna be a game about can R22 get home? Doesn't even get the mill actually. It's forced to come home. Is now gonna go back for the mill, going to go get it. Melvin, going to grab the badger here. He's doing such a great job distracting R22 with this mill. Again, doesn't get it. R22, not able to get this mill for the life of him, and now going to expand, but Melvin, playing this one base badger. I feel like this film was almost a feint, or quickly determined that he wasn't going to be able to hold it, and so decided to make a game switch. He's going to be switching into this badger, and I think that's a good decision here. I don't think R22 is yet to see it. I think he's yet to see it, and now he finally sees it being built, so he knows he has 40 seconds until death hits. What is the decision here? He's going to farm up. I mean, he does have snakes, he does have falcons, these are good counters to badger, but he has to, he has to be so careful here. Now finally going to be able to get the space. I don't, but Melvin, that base is not the prize for Melvin anymore. That badger is almost half produced now. And this is going to be all about can R22 hold it? And I don't know if buying all of these farms is the right decision. Only he needs one or two at this point. Buying more tier two, these are not going to hit the field in time for Melvin's badger. This badger push is going to be almost impossible, I think, for R22 to hold. R22 trying to go for a weird falcon. He's going to try to go for a falcon snipe on this warren, but unfortunately, that badger is going to be out ahead of time. He does not have time anymore, and if these falcons are out of position, he could be in a world of trouble right now. He's going to go for it. No, he's not. He's got to pull those falcons back. He needs these. And Melvin just going to just gonna macro up here. Incredible. Is he going to try to make the push? I think he is. Let's see. Has to be... So Oh my goodness, now more Falcons hitting the, the board here for R22. Those tier 2 Warrens actually getting some nice value here. Oh, and a snake, snake tag perhaps? No, no snake tag. Oh, if he loses these snakes, it's game over. Oh no! Losing both snakes so fast before the fight even really started. And now not able to get any tags onto that Badger. Trying to micro these Falcons as best he can. But Melvin Fro being so careful about this Badger. Can he kill it? Pigeons healing everything, nothing goes down, the Badger is fully revved on top of these Falcons, everything going down for R22. Disaster, losing those snakes before the fight even started. 
Now another snake out. Just needs to keep this badger alive. If you are Melvin Fro here, just needs to play so safe. I don't think R22 can do anything at this point. That has to be GG. Going to tap out. That's two to one for Melvin Fro. All right, let's get into game number four here. So well played from both sides right there. It was so close at the end there. R22 just doing a bit of a micro mistake, trying to get some pre-tags out with those snakes. But here he is spawning in the bottom left. And to the far east, our friend Melvin Fro, currently up 2-1. to one, But keeping the series close. Nobody pulling ahead originally. No 3-0s so far, which is what we love to see. <laughs> and a bit more of a normal type map, you might say. We're going to see a nice easy expand for both players. With a nice campfire for R22. And a pretty good campfire here for Melvin Fro. Uh, can choose whether to take it or not. Especially against cams and lizards. Has Melvin seen the base yet? He does know where it is. Gonna go 5 farm single here. R22 responds with a 6 farm single. And then with a Q farm. Melvin Fro did sell that Warren. When you're in the high level like this, Everything is just about little, little decisions. Who can get a little bit more greed than the other player? And uh, if you're looking te very technically, Melvin Fro getting a little bit more in terms of income here at this point, but almost negligible, I would say. <laughs> Not going to put any any much of a dent in anything. Going to be seeing a quick expand here from Melvin. This is kind of what I th thought was going to happen. Uh, this is a pretty far map, but both players have really nice expands, and I, I think Melvin Fro, Melvin Fro specifically... He's really going to want to get into that late game composition of that Badger Owl. And so he's going to be ripping and roaring to try to get that second base economy up, which is what he really needs to get that double, even triple tier 3 composition. R22, looking a little bit aggressive here, has only a couple warrants, floating a ton of food right now. I'm not quite sure why. There it is. Going to throw down two mole warrants. Maybe a third squirrel warrant here. Yes, he does. No, going to opt for the moles instead. No, going to buy it again. <laughs> a little bit of indecision, but this push could be brutal. This is a bit of a tight mole timing, and this could be tough against Melvin. Even with just a single farm, Melvin going to sell it down. Does R22 have enough? These boards, these warrens are in front. This could be such good value for these moles. He's going to wait for more moles, but it's just giving Melvin more and more time to build up tier 1. I think R22 has a window right now. He has quite a bit of army lead. Gonna buy a four. He has to move now, though. All of his moles are on the field. What is he waiting for? I think Melvin now maybe has enough to hold. He has so much. His commander goes down. And Melvin might even look for some value here with that commander death. Yes, he is gonna get some. He's gonna get both these warrants. Oh my goodness. No, this is not at all what you want to see if you're R22. Total disaster. And I don't think he even has a chance to move in now. He's so far behind in terms of army. Or at least even. And with his suspenders advantage, I think Melvin's gonna hold this just fine. One Warren goes down. All the moles dead now. And this might just be Melvin bringing home the victory. Gonna get this mill probably. Mill goes down and it's gonna be 14 squirrels to 9 for R22. And that's gonna be Melvin cleaning this game up with a little bit of sloppy commander control from R22. That is the difference between a win and a loss in such high premiere like this is. GG. That is 3 to 1. R22 a little bit behind now. Needs to bring this back in our game number 5. He's down 1 to 3. Here he is spawning in the bottom right. Playing Hopper. And in the bottom left, comfortably, sitting on match point is Melvin Fro. 3 to 1 right now. The game can turn around just like that. I think R22 really had a position there where he could have made something happen, especially on 4 moles or 4 or 6 moles. I think he really had a chance where he could have moved out, could have made some damage happen. But I think Melvin, he just waited a, he waited a little too long. That is, R22 waited a little too long, and Melvin was able to get up enough. And with that commander death, just the cherry on top, getting two free mole warren picks, that just ended up being the, uh, the nail in the coffin, I suppose. Bit of early game shenanigans here. Nobody really sure what they want to do. <laughs> it's funny. In the last couple games, we've been seeing Melvin Fro be the one who buys a war and then sells it up and R22 being the guy who's left sitting around with a non-producing squirrel war but in this game it's actually the opposite Melvin Fro going to be a little slower on farms this time actually 
Not even like it's it's a decent bit slower on farms. Oh, Mars twenty two actually ended up selling one of his farms. I don't think he needed to do that. So it's gonna even out, I think. Yep. Yeah. Just gonna even out. Looking at maps, your VCU R22 has a really, 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 really nice back expand. Oh my god, that's a nice back expand. It's like, it's picturesque. It's walled, it's a walled fortress. Oh my goodness. Uh, has a pretty nice forward expansion as well. Melvin can't complain as either. He has a really nice back expand here. And a pretty good forward as well. Although I don't think they'll both take these forwards. Probably going to play off two bases here for Melvin. Or if, he t if Melvin takes his base first and manages to get control, then I don't think we'll see City R22 take this base, or vice versa. There we go, there's the expansion for both players. Just gonna be some tier 1 chicken at the moment. Here we go, R22 gonna be the first to pull the trigger, grabbing a Chameleon Warren. Melvin Fro gets a nice scout on it, sees the second mill as well. Great scouting here from our premier players. Melvin Fro gonna grab a farm, make it 2. R22, no slouch himself, grab three. <laughs> but Melvin's gonna make it four while he's at it. A blind four farms from Melvin Fro. <laughs> just assuming that R22 will go up to three, and he's completely correct. Gonna stay just a little bit ahead, just on total guesswork, and it's gonna pay off. R22 will probably go up to five here. But look at this. Melvin will go up to six! <laughs> So Melvin gonna maintain a very very slight lead here. Yeah, you can see it's very slight. Actually, oh, just a second off. Yeah, they're, they're even. <laughs> I'm just fooling around a little bit. But if you do look at the uh, income graph, you see Melvin consistently on the forward end of that red line there, just by a little bit. Hey, but every advantage stacks up over time. You can't anyway. If you can get a little advantage anywhere, well. You better be happy to take it. Melvin is always happy to take it. So we are seeing the battle here of cams versus skunks. R22 has been bringing cams all this game, and Melvin has been bringing the skunks to complement his badger. Also, gonna, both players are going to add falcons in now. I do think the cams and skunks play sort of an interchangeable role against that kind of tier 1 killer. Uh, they can both perform incredibly well in given scenarios. I, w I don't say I'd give the edge particularly to either one. Uh, they just work differently. 10R22, he will see that badger. He will see the other tier, tier Warren. So now, what is the decision here for Melvin? Gonna drop a owl. Wow, incredibly greedy here for Melvin. But this is the comp he wanted, right? This is the comp he wanted so badly. Gonna grab... Oh, is there a boar coming out for R22? This is what I would expect to see at this point. No. No boar gonna come out. Instead, gonna grab a ton of tier 2 Warrens. Some tier 1 as well. I'd like. To, he's floating at about 200 food. I'd like to see him... He's just going to know, he's going to to pay for his tier 2 producing. And Melvin, in the meantime, going to grab triple tier 3. Did he see it? Yeah, he does see it. So what is the response here? Because I don't, even with so many tier 2, I'm not sure this is going to fare well against Badger Owl. Going to grab a boar, but this is so delayed. This boar is, is about 60 seconds behind, and that is so much in an RTS just like uh, Tooth and Tail here. I don't I don't think that boar is ever going to hit the field, honestly. I mean, even even the owls are ahead of it. One owl. Yeah, even the owls are ahead of it. Oh my god. I mean, Melvin's full comp will be out. Uh, his triple tier 3 comp will be out before R22 even sees a boar. Uh, R22 does have this three extra farms here on a new mill, so he does have that nice economy advantage. Looking for some nice snake picks. Looking for some cam... And harass a little bit of here and there has a really nice anti-badger composition here with so many snakes with so many falcons uh, but is it going to be enough he's getting a little bit antsy here selling off farms selling off whatever you can we are seeing melvin gearing up for that final push a ton a ton of uh, pigeons being placed down all the tier one getting sold off for him gonna get oh my goodness gonna grab double badger triple owl and this is the Doomsday comp. R22 needs to see this. He's so worried about a push right now, but doesn't realize he's being ultra greeted against. Oh, he sees it. But he does it. Did he see the full extent of it? He knows what's happening to him. Oh my god. What's what's he going to do? He needs to, I think he buys farms here. I think you got to buy a couple farms here. you got to do something. Uh, because a single boar is not going to hold out against 5 tier 3. I mean, this is just insanity. 
And I might even like to see Melvin do a, a little bit of a couple waves of Mice Harass, even if he wants to. Although, honestly, I'm not sure about that. He might be losing himself the game. R22 has a really nice defense against that kind of harassment. I'm not sure it's the right amount of owls quite yet. But all those extra tier 3 are producing now. R22 looking for a bit of a window before those extra tier 3 hit the field. But looking at the army graph, they're about even. Kiting back those owl, or those mice that is. Here comes the fight. So many falcons here for R22. Keeping that boar alive. There it goes down. There's no tier 1 for that boar to get value on. Oh my goodness. But all the owls going down. Everything going down except for that crucial, crucial. Oh my god! And the badger survives. Those pigeons going to heal it up, and R22 losing everything. But guess what? Melvin throws second badger, and his extra owl is coming on the field now. He has his comp out again! This is absolutely brutal. Melvin Fro never letting off the gas pedal. And while R22 is desperately trying to resupply, Melvin Fro is thriving right now. Has everything he needs, has that full extra base. Now, we have to say that R22 has been ahead in the economy for quite some time now. He uh, he definitely has an advantage here in terms of economy, but look at this army difference here. Melvin's so ahead in army right now. Has a window, honestly, before this boar hits the field, if he wants to make something happen, but is just going to wait for more owls to come out. I don't mind this decision either. R22, with those three extra farms, have been farming for quite a while now. Is this economy lead enough? I don't think this boar is going to get enough value, unfortunately. It will be crucial in clearing out any mice, but once the mice are gone, the boar is almost useless, other than maybe as a tank, I suppose. But here we go, Melvin. Triple owl, double badger, a massive, massive army of pigeons here. 18, couple falcons, couple skunks. Moving out across the battlefield, lots of snakes, lots of falcons here from R22. So many mice though, this death squad of mice looking for something here. And here comes the fight, the mice moving in, the boar roasting them down, but can it kill them fast enough is the question. They are such good tanks, the mill goes down, all of those tier 3 still alive for Melvin Fro. Boar going down, and look at everything is going down for uh, R22, the badgers all still alive, the poison not able to do enough here, and Melvin going to take the series 4 to 1. A really commanding showing here from Melvin Fro. That tier 3 composition is so brutal, especially against the pure, almost pure tier 2 of R22. Well played from everyone there. GG's.